Welcome to Figma Bytes, the video series that aims to teach you to speed up your Figma workflow. Our main course today is sizzling slot components. This technique lets you customize components without needing to detach. Hmm. Let's see. I should grab the latest dialogue and make sure it's on spec. Yoink. Now let me go put it here. Need to make this change. Pull this content in. How do I get it in there and make it work together? I guess it's not an option in this component. I'll have to detach. We've got another detachment. Bring in the field team. What's going on? Who are you? What? Okay. All drama aside, sometimes the changes we want to make are within spec, but they're not supported in Figma for whatever reason. And other times we're pushing on the system because we think there might be a better recipe. No matter what it is, it would be nice to be able to stay attached to the system and receive future updates while still being able to customize. When we detach components, which is the shortcut Option Command B, it means we're going to have to do some manual work to keep our designs up to date with future changes to the design system. Using a technique some are calling slot components, we can make flexible components made for swapping internal pieces. If we select this internal content layer and move over to the Instant Swap menu on the right, we can pick a local component to inject into the system component. If anything changes in the main component, our customized instance will receive them automatically. Okay, we understand the problem and solution. It's time to learn how to cook up our own flexible components. To start, let's build our reusable slot component. Press F and click to create a new frame. Add auto layout to this frame by pressing Shift A. Over in the auto layout panel, we'll zero out all the values. Now let's add a pink border and make it dashed so that it stands out and doesn't blend into the component. Now we'll turn it into a component by pressing Option Command K and make sure it's named Slot. Up above, we've already made some component pieces to start from. If you're following along, feel free to pause and build these component pieces yourself. Next, let's copy our slot component. Select the content area of this dialog and paste and replace it with the shortcut Shift Option Command V. Now we'll adjust our horizontal resizing so that it's set to fill and stretches to the width of the container. A slot component shouldn't have layout or spacing applied anywhere. It should sit inside a container that holds all of that. Let's double check things are spaced and working as expected. Now we have some options. We could leave this as is and publish it, hoping that people figure out how to use it just by poking around. But like our example at the beginning of the video, we can make this slot a little more discoverable by naming the layer with an emoji and something descriptive. Move over to the Layers panel and find our slot. Double click on the layer name to rename it to Puzzle Emoji and the word Swap Me. Now it will stand out in the Layers panel. The second thing we can do is create an Instant Swap property. To do that, select the slot component and move over to the Instance panel on the right. Click the Create Property icon and create a property named with a puzzle emoji and the word swap me like we did before. If we make a quick instance of this component, we can see how the property works. We only need to select the component frame, which reveals our new property over on the right panel. Slot components are a fairly new technique that Figma design kits are starting to use. So that means designers are gonna need to change their workflow in order to use these components. What if there was a page in our design kit that explained how to use slots? Well, here you go. But how will designers discover this? Not everyone will look through each page in a file before jumping in. One opportunity we can use is to include a link to this page within the slot component itself. Go over to the pages on the left, right click on this page and select copy link to page. Let's go over to our main slot component and add some text inside. We'll type slot component colon instant swap your own content into this place. Learn how. Select the words learn how and press command K. This will let us paste a URL into the input. Paste our page link and press enter. Now when people go to use our component, they will have a natural discovery path for learning about slots. Let's adjust the styling a little bit. I think we just need to make the text a little bit smaller and that should be enough. It doesn't need to be pretty. Okay, so we have a pretty clear picture of why to use them and how to build them, but what will it look like when designers use them in their files? 
Back in our product design file, we're designing an information dialog for Zoodash, and we've made some customizations to it. Our dialog is going to have a graphic off to the left side with some text on the right. We ended up detaching our dialog while we were exploring the design, and now it's time to get it on spec for handoff. We have a fresh copy of our dialog straight from the design system, and I'm already seeing some subtle padding differences. We can quickly get our title in place. Next, let's make a copy of our slot to use for our local component. Since we've already designed the internal content, let's go take a copy. Now we'll rename our local component to customize dialog content. Select the text inside the component and use the paste to replace shortcut shift option command V to put it inside our frame. Next, get rid of our pink border and change our horizontal resizing to fill container. With our content frame selected, press the Create Component button on the top of the screen. Now we can select our dialog instance, go over to the Properties panel on the right, and change our Swap Me property to our new local component. Navigate through this popover to Local Components. From our current page, select our Customized Dialog Content component. Our dialog instance is updated and will stay attached to the main component. In the future, maybe we want to update the style of our main component. Let's change this title style a bit. We'll select both of these titles, change them to 32 pixels, make them bold, and pick a new color. Now over in the designer file that is using a customized instance of that component, we'll see an update automatically. Our custom content holds up just fine and our dialog stays on spec to our design system. If this had been a published library, our designer would get to review the change before it took place. That's how you work with slot components. I hope this Figma Byte helps you slap some sizzling slots into your systems. Thanks for watching.